there's nothing that can actually beat the taste of a warm homemade bread hi and welcome back to betty's simple kitchen today i have a recipe of making beer bread oh do not worry once the bread is baked all the alcohol is going to evaporate this bread is very chewy and it's not dense but of course the taste of beer is still very present in this bread so i can understand for those who do not like to do it because of religious reasons so guys let's go ahead and find out which ingredients we need for this recipe 300 grams beer you can take any beer of your choice 10 grams salt 10 grams fresh yeast 50 grams wholemeal flour 50 grams rye flour and 400 grams all-purpose flour and this is how the process goes we are going to start with a process called autolysis what that means we are going to mix our flour with the beer this process is going to shorten our kneading time since the gluten will get released without much effort but guys you're going to understand what i mean later when i'm going to show you exactly what is going to happen i am going to leave that much beer for mixing our yeast later this is going to take you about one minute to mix everything together and there's no kneading required at this stage guys as you can see our dough is falling apart at this stage there's nothing that has happened wait for 30 minutes and then you're going to see what is going to happen and in the meantime let us talk about a proofing basket i wanted to quickly show you what is a proofing basket how it's used and how to prepare it before proofing they come in different shapes oblong awful the proofing baskets give the bread the shape if you see a round bread is because they used a round proofing basket and it also gives structure and it takes the pattern of the proofing basket as you can see here it usually takes these lines you can either use a proofing basket or a bowl to support your bread because if you don't give your bread support, it's going to spread in any direction and in any form. And to avoid that, we either use a bowl. This bowl can be plastic, ceramic, or wood. That doesn't matter. Or a proofing basket. The only thing guys you need to do is when you are using the bowl, please apply some oil and then you dust it with some flour. But I'm going to show you how I prepare my basket. I usually spray it with some water. And then I'm going to dust it with flour. Because later when I'm removing my bread, I don't want it to remain stuck on my basket. Alternatively, if you don't want to dust your basket, you can use a linen cloth. Now I'm going to remove the excess flour and my basket is ready for use. So guys, let's see what happened 30 minutes later. You can see our dough has been working very, very, very well. Look, before it was just falling apart. But now you can see it's forming a net. That shows that it has been working very well. The next thing now, guys, we are going to put our salt. Then our yeast. Beer. Our remaining beer I mean just want to mix this together I've transferred this in the working surface guys and we are not going to need any flour anymore so guys this is how I need I like putting pressure on the surface So guys, after about five minutes of kneading, you can see it's a very soft dough. Please don't add any more flour. But this is how you know that your dough is ready. I'm going to do a test. 
I'm going to take some part of the dough, wet your fingers, and then I'm going to stretch. When you get this, you know the way it's stretching and it's not falling apart. I'm getting a very good stretch. That's how I tell that my dough is ready. So guys, I have put my dough back in the bowl and I'm going to let this rest for another 45 minutes. I know making bread is a bit of a process and it needs time, but there's nothing that can beat the taste of a nice homemade bread. I'm going to cover this up and let it rest for 45 minutes. After about 45 minutes, guys, the next thing is now to form our dough. I'm going for an awful shape, so I'm going to start by dusting the surface. And now I'll start forming our dough. I'm just spreading it a little bit. I'm being careful not to deflate all the air. I'm going to do like that. Turn it up. Make sure here there is no flour because you want it to stick. I'm going for an awful shape, so that's what I'm trying to form. This where the dough comes together is where I'm going to put it upward. That's how it looks. And now I'm going to let it proof for another two hours. Alternatively, if you want to bake your bread tomorrow, you can put this in the fridge and wait overnight. And then tomorrow you can go ahead and bake your bread. Now our proofing basket is going to give our bread support and shape as it's proofing. And of course, I'm going to cover my bread and keep it in a warm place. See you guys in the next step. Guys, I just wanted to show you a trick on how to tell if your dough is ready. You see the way it's springing back slowly? That shows that it's ready for baking. But if your dough springs right back, then it needs more time. So guys, let's go ahead with the next step. Since I'm going for a crusty bread, a bread with a good crust, I want to create steam and I want to show you three methods of how you can do it. One method is when you use such a heat resistant bowl or a pan. You put it at the bottom shelf of your oven, let it preheat, and then you put hot water as you put in your bread in the oven, and then you close the oven. That way you are going to create steam. The second method is when you brush your recent dough with hot water before placing it in the hot oven. So the third method that is the one that I'm going to use in case you have such a cast iron pan like this one it's heavy duty and when it's heated it remains hot what happens is that when i put my bread inside here and i close it this cast iron is going to be like a homemade steam oven so what I'm going to do the first 30 minutes when I'm baking, I'm going to, it's going to stay closed. But the last 20 minutes, I'm going to open it so that my bread can start browning. You know, when it's closed, it's not going to brown so much. But when I open it, I'll give it a chance for the last 20 minutes for it to start browning. Guys, I hope that you could be able to understand what I'm trying to explain. And you can choose which method is going to work better for you. Guys, before I put the bread in the oven, I'm also going to give it a nice, sharp, deep cut. The cut is going to prevent our bread from opening in unexpected areas. Give it the right path for it to open up. And another thing is, it's usually give it a very nice look when you do the cut. So guys, bake this for 230 degrees, the first 30 minutes when the lid is on. And then you put the lid off and bake for another 20 minutes, 210 degrees. 
so that your bread can get a nice brown. So guys, I have already tasted the bread. The crust is super. Just hear this out. Amazing. And it's super soft and it's not dense and it has a nice flavor. Guys, I know making bread at home is a nut that one has to master over time. It happens sometimes that my bread doesn't turn out the way I expected. There's so much to learn about how to make bread, how to prepare the dough. But understanding how bread is produced is something that I find that is important so that we appreciate our good bakers. Especially for those who don't do mass production. They have to take their time to prepare the dough and it costs a lot of time and energy. I would love to hear if you like making bread at home, which complication you have ever had. And if you love this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment. And until next time guys, bye bye.